why hello everyone how's it going it merry christmas it, it's sunday morning it's 9 a.m in a few seconds um on christmas day 2022 i know i know that all of you are on pins and needles because you know that that yesterday i did nothing but ohio tax rates right you understand that right that, that's why you're all here right Nobody cares about about football. You care about payroll and, and Ohio tax rates. Why am why do I do this? I do this so that I build a payroll program that works for all 50 states and that when January rolls around and everyone gets off their football high from yesterday of just watching football and eating turkey or whatever you have for Christmas Eve dinner, the, I, I plan ahead. So I did nothing but tax work yesterday. And I just have to say, before we get into all the sports algorithm talk, because this is obviously a sports algorithm video here for Christmas Day, but can I just say that Okay, this is what I did yesterday is I was looking at all these Ohio districts, all right? And this is the craziest thing. This is a document, yeah, revised this year. They just did it, right? This is effective next year. Meaning if you live in one of these places, I believe you have a school district code, right? There's tons of them. I, I always am amazed at how many Ohio has. And so they finally released this and I'm like, well, here's what I do on KenBraverman.com is I take information and I act on it faster and more accurately than anyone else is what we do because it's just it's just the way we do things around here. So I went through it and I was doing all this and I was like, why? I was like, and I looked at my historical list of Ohio. I have all these other counties that have different rates. I'm like, what is going on in Ohio? Is it so tribal in the towns that that every little one of these towns, which might even be right next to each other, have slightly different tax rates. Like, what is going on? No other state has this many. So, like, the level with which they will tax someone in Ohio is astonishing to me. And speaking of people getting taxed in Ohio, how did our Ohio football teams do yesterday? Because we're done with payroll. I agree. Let's. Although after I do this video, I'm doing nothing but payroll work. I'm actually converting that that payroll file to Google um, from Google Sheets to Excel. So I'm I'm doing nothing but that. I'm not paying attention to any of these games. But I know you guys care about the videos because we have a video yesterday that while it only has like 108 views or something, it's got 11 likes and and also the fact that it did awesome. I think um, I didn't win money somehow because I made crazy bets and I didn't make straight bets. Yeah, why didn't I win money? What happened? Hold on a second. I mean, I won some, but I lost money overall. The Giants did cover five and a half, but lost. Oh, this is a different ticket. I, that's why. I did two tickets. One was a live ticket here, which Commanders and Eagles both lost. That's why. Even though this game luckily stayed under. Stayed under. Detroit did not show up. Um, well, we'll talk about, we won't talk about the bet that I did in the video. That that was what the video yesterday was about. Was this final bet? It's a snapshot, and this got a little bit of a payback. And the under in the Kansas City game hit, which was plus six hundred on here. So this had a potential win of thirty five thousand seven forty six. Okay, the Steelers ended up winning. I fell asleep, didn't watch the game. This barely stayed under. Crazy. This game actually was was when things turned bad. So the Saints-Cleveland game I had bet as a tie, and actually it was almost that. Cleveland came down in the last couple minutes of the game and had a shot to tie this game up and then did not convert on touchdown late. So that that would have been a, a, certainly a change maker. Detroit, I mean, how... How short, how goldfish is my memory that I think I can play Detroit after they win a week or two? Like, stop, Kenny, stop. Bengals win. It's a good team. Bills win. It's a good team. This is sad here. Tennessee blows this game. Some I must have been some turnover or something. This game has a million points. And when the Giants come back and lose on a 61-yard field goal and the Commanders, Heineke, benched, for too many turnovers. So this $59 only ended up being 40 bucks, exactly. And I actually took a cash out around $30 because I was so disgusted when um, the Titans blew it. I was like, oh my gosh, this, 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 this day is over now. So I cashed it out and I made another bet and I actually won. So I have, I have $80 in my account right now for, for Sunday. So that's my going to be my round robin. I'm just doing that. And then, like I said, nothing but payroll work have to get that done today people are paying me people are asking 
I agree. It's less than a week before 2023. Your payroll has to be set up. I understand. So I am doing nothing but that after this, but I will make one wager. What's it going to be? Well, there's three sports going today. There's football. Three games. There's NBA. And there's college basketball, like Hawaiian tournament or something going on in college basketball. So let's first of start. Uh, we'll start with what everybody cares about, which is NFL. And there's only three games. So what happened yesterday? Let's finish updating the scores. I'm just breaking into this this morning. Like I said, it's, it's 9 a.m. We're going to see how long we work into 9 a.m. to get all this done. I know the Raiders lost a low scoring game to the Steelers in the cold. Were my cold predictions correct? That's what I really want to know. So it says six and five on this Saturday. And it says, what did I say? I said it was going to tell you that five out of the top six teams won, but the Eagles didn't win. But the Niners did. Giants cover, which is helpful. I didn't mention it in the video. I took them to win. I should have taken them plus four because that's more than a field goal. What was I thinking? Terrible, non-correct bet there. The argument could have been made for Philadelphia, which I kind of did, but I was too scared of that because I didn't think they were going to play. So I said, take the over. The game has 74 points. <laughs> I'm going to send 50. And there, was, there wasn't there was weather issues because it was in Dallas in the Dome, right? So, yeah, they blew it out of the water. Also, in places where it was cold, I said the magnifier would be 3.5. Cold places were here. They were here. They were here. They were here. They were here. And they were here. And they were here. Okay. All those games were supposed to have unders generally according to terrible weather. Did they? Um, and did they match the whatever? Um, well, let's see here. First of all, I want to go down to a magnifier 3.5 because that's what I was estimating. And that's what I made my bet off of. I made that bet, that plus 600 bet of the Chiefs under 36 and a half because it only projects 34 points. And there was actually 34 points in this game. What about the Buffalo game? It predicted 33 points. There were 48. So Buffalo outscored here in the cold. What about, oh yeah, this game too. What happened, Carolina? Score gets flipped. Detroit, oh, I don't even want to think about it. Detroit. They overscore a little bit in the Bengals game, just a little bit, though. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Wow. So this magnifier was actually down at like this for the Pittsburgh game. Yep, Pittsburgh game gets it almost exactly at a uh, 2.5, 2.4 magnifier. So that's saying the cold had such a huge impact. Yeah, it's 2.5, like almost exactly. It's amazing how it does that. Um, it just kind of knows the differential between the two. What I'm doing is I'm switching up magnifiers, and I'm showing you that this game gets almost exactly the correct score at a super low, low magnifier because the game was in the teens and everyone was putting their hands – People were talking about gloves that they never wear as quarterbacks. Like, obviously, this was going to have the impact. Now, that, that resulted in some good things. Um, I haven't looked at today. I mean, it's time we talk about today, unless we want to talk any more about the games from yesterday or go down the list. Bengals hold on. Steelers somehow win a low-scoring game I didn't watch. Crazy shootout between these two teams where it did matter but didn't matter. Niners showed their defense is supreme, and the commanders had to throw in Carson Wentz. Giants came back and made it close and blow it. Ravens, yeah, this is another one. Let me look at this, right? It says 18-17, ends up being 17-9, even at a magnifier of five. So this game was in the cold. It would have brought it down even more, right? Because I said do it at a magnifier of 3.5. That brings that game 13-12, and it just spread out a little bit more. So we underestimated Baltimore a little bit, I guess, uh, at home. But they still win. I said stay away from it. Of course they win. Um, poor Tennessee ends up getting a touch. Yeah, the, whatever that turnover was, they had the ball in the fourth quarter driving up 14-13 and lost the ball somehow. I don't know what it was. And this game just <laughs> should have been 17-17, honestly. Oh, that sucks. All right. Well, let's open up the rest of the week. Uh, I'm not going to update the injury report because I don't think it's important to do that on a Sunday. 
I think the injury report was more correct yesterday, even for Sunday's games. So what is happening on Sunday? It's three games. And it says take the box, but says they don't cover. It says, it says Green Bay over Miami. This is the sneaky one. I heard a, I heard one of the announcers talking because I, I have to admit, I did I did decide to purchase the monthly um NFL app subscription again finally. I, I had canceled it because I was done with this. And I was like, oh, there's other sports, but there were no other sports yesterday. So it was like, oh, it's like I can't even watch the or listen to the game. I'm like, all right, you're gonna get five dollars out of the NFL. And that's exactly what I gave them. So, so I, I did catch some of these games and I'll probably catch them today, uh, even if, you know, you're mobile. And the question is, well, what do you do? And I heard when I was listening yesterday, they were talking about the Packers almost having a shot at making the playoffs. And I was like, is that possible? It's like, I, I wrote them off. They're six and eight, but something about their division or the way that things are going makes it possible and I thought that's a city that is a city, not just a team. I have been there this year. Um, I have un unpublished video of me rollerblading around Lambeau Field and scaring the crap out of a woman that came out of a door because I was flying by at like 35 miles an hour. So funny. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> let's, let's let's go back. Uh, so what do you do? So so I was like, well, the, the Packers have a reason to win. Uh, and and like I said, Miami hasn't been right. So it's right for something. And certainly the Packers plus three and a half seems like a wager to make. Because the algorithm, this is why there's some value here. Um, I mean, algorithm says they win. Now, is that because it's including Rodgers and, and Love and who's playing? But is it okay to include both of them if they're both active? That's one of the things that might be screwing this up. Is it, give, is it giving them too much quarterback power? Yeah, and it's saying that love is better. And I think love is playing. So if you remove Aaron Rodgers from the list and re-predict the score to get a truer score, it's going to be closer. Not that much closer, though. Amazing. I, I, I'm surprised the algorithm is that good at doing that. I thought removing Rodgers would bring this to like 25-25. It's only 27-25. It's still Green Bay wins. So, I mean... Okay, there's being a good gambler and there's being a greedy gambler. And we're going to be a good gambler today on our wager. Because I don't want to lose my entire wager today. I want to make smart bets. And that means that this Green Bay plus three and a half, while it's not a plus 360, is only a field goal and it's more than a field goal. And it's the right bet for a round robin. So that's number one. Now, Tampa Bay and Arizona, the only thing you can uh, the only thing you can get here is you can get Arizona plus seven half. They are bad though. Boy, I don't like taking bad teams. This line is terrible. What happens in this game? Are there more points than normal? This game's in Arizona. The over-under set at 39. You can take that. I mean, Arizona is a team that because of their screw-ups, usually their games I feel like result in more points. We could look at historically Arizona over the entire season and see what kind of tw uh, point totals they've had. Uh, and they are at home in this game. Uh, so we got, we got, we could just look at their home games too. But I just want to see their actual total points in games. How many times have they been over 40, right? So far, we've got record of the one, two below 40. And this one hasn't happened yet. And this game was below 40 against the Rams, who don't score much. I mean, Tampa Bay does have good defense, but just I, just, I think it's me wanting to play the game, but there not being a lot to play in that game. So, um, but it's one of those things where, yeah, you're gonna want to watch Brady. What do you do here? How do you how do you not be a gambler and make the most educated pick possible? The spread would say take Arizona. But Arizona is a bad team. Tampa Bay probably really wants to win. Um, the The real money is taking something like Arizona to win and completely upsetting them because that gets paid immense. And to be a good gambler, you need to bet things that are crazy. Because why am I not rushing to take Tampa Bay? Because I'm not impressed with Brady anymore. I think he's older than me. I can't believe somebody older than me is playing professional football at this point. I mean, I can, but 
damn, right? So it's, I mean, is Arizona good enough? Arizona's awful though, <clears throat> right? So once again, you're left with this over-under situation. Um, yeah. Arizona's in a dome, like. All right, I'm going to open up the app on my phone and we're going to start to go through this because I need to also look at other wagers. But I'm, I'm, I don't know what to do in that game. Now, the other game is Denver and the Rams, which is creating a tie here. And the Rams are not good. It's Wow, look at this. The over-under is exactly as the Vegas odds makers. Unbelievable. Well, if they tie, it means it goes over, right? Uh, but if it's like 17, 17, 34, something like that, this game's in LA at least. At least you don't have to deal with Denver weather. I'm tempted to just take two overs here and move on. Do you do alternate overs to try to get paid? Oh, goodness gracious. Um, this is gambling. I don't like this. I'm going to move on to another sport. Let me explain. The only thing I like taking there, I said the L word, I like taking the Packers to win. But I will take the Packers plus three and a half is my pick of the day because of the nature of if this game goes 24 24 and Miami wins by a field goal, you still win with the Packers plus three and a half. That's the betters bet here that wins more often than anything else on this board, in my opinion, for NFL today. And the other two games, I'm wanting to take a couple overs, but that's me reaching and those not being good picks. So we're moving on to a different sport. Uh, we're going to move on to college basketball because I did kind of prepare it already. I will quickly, because it is important, I will quickly grab the college basketball injury report because if you don't and you miss something like an entire team having Hawaiian COVID or something, whatever's going on there. I'm surprised they brought everybody to Hawaii. They're over that now. The, uh, on the islands, they, they get a little scared when you're bringing in new people when there's viruses running around. But I guess they're over COVID. And if Hawaii's over COVID, they're like, bring the tourism back. We love you. Then I think we're ex we're all accepting that COVID and stuff is endemic and not a pandemic anymore. And it's something we have to live with every day and not just be scared of. I think that's what's going on. Until the next until the next virus. Um, all right, so the new injury report is here. We're going to refresh the injury pivot, which refreshes injuries. Not too much has changed because it's only been Christmas Eve to Christmas. And we're going to refresh this. And I haven't redone the lines, but this is the look for the, the college basketball tournament games today. And one thing I did notice was Seattle over GW at not a bad line. So I don't think any of these are home games. I think everybody is in like Kauai or Mary or Mary or Maui or, um, you know, like it's one of those places. Um, Green Bay has moved down to 150, but they're still plus three and a half. Okay. I'm going to college basketball if they allow me to look for that sport today. And I'm going to take Seattle, which is now minus 160. Sorry, guys. I guess other people ran the algorithm already. Um, so that moved Iona against Pepperdine, but the margin is not great. And it's a bad line. So I bet you it says Pepperdine covers this. The spread cover number on this game is minus two. So it says Pepperdine actually covers the spread here. I believe, I believe Pepperdine can actually win this game, given this is not a true home situation or whatever. Um, Utah versus Washington state has Utah state. Hmm. They're a better team, too. So Utah State is stronger than Iona for a couple reasons. So Seattle, Utah State, it has Southern Methodist at no margin over Hawaii. Really? In Hawaii. Um, and the in Hawaii part means Hawaii is home, right? So that's tough. Um that's really tough because it's saying Hawaii is not a very good team. That's a tough one. But Utah State and Seattle seem to be okay. So I'm grabbing those two. Utah is minus 166, and Seattle is minus 160. Okay. So Seattle. 
So when you do these college basketball games, there are no true home games today, so it's kind of tough to, to give you accurate numbers about how much these these win. But you see with college basketball, it it's it's awesome. So if it doesn't win, it doesn't win. But it, you, you'll probably have something about that is like definitely covered. Almost probably win this game. That college basketball algorithm is is like a ninety percenter. It, it really is with with a lot of home teams, especially. So it's a short day. I I'm tempted to take SMU plus five, but then I'll, I'll be angry that I lost being like, why did I take, why did I take a team playing against Hawaii in Hawaii? Like, what am I thinking? Right. I think that game is in Hawaii. I'm almost, I know it has to be because the only tournament that's going on is, is the four games in Hawaii. And this is actually a true home game for Creighton. This is a real game. I believe. I don't think that's a tournament. So there must be some historical Creighton to Paul matchup on Christmas or something that I didn't know about. And I don't know what's going on in this game. Like algorithm says that, that, uh, that they actually win by 10 points or 11 and it's 50. Like it sounds, looks like a mess. So you just took the other two games. Now, NBA, I haven't updated NBA. I have a file open. So we got to update NBA completely to know what's happening. This is from the 23rd. I haven't done today yet. So we got to do NBA. Here's how we do NBA. It's a real easy one. Somebody asked me if they could buy an algorithm. I was like, you can contact me and offer me money. I was like, I'm not selling them anymore because I'm doing payroll work all day. So I, I don't want to be bothered with it, to be honest. So consider that when you're asking for my time and asking for money for these. Because while I'm updating them every day now, I'm not going to be updating all of these every day in the future. I might even do in baseball this year. I hate, hate to tell everybody that is not happening. I'll, I'll point you to Carlos who's doing it. He does it like, okay. Um, I, I, had to, I had to update it for him once because he got offline. But I mean, he does a pretty good job with it. So he'll do baseball. I'm not touching baseball. I This is the, my first baseball-free year in like three years. It's going to be this year, 2023. I cannot wait to not worry about baseball. <laughs> I really can't wait to not worry about baseball. Baseball sucks. It never ends. At least with, I like sports with clocks, you know? I want time to expire. I do not want outs or innings or pitching changes. Like if you think about waiting for pitching changes for your life to end, like if that that's why baseball is for super old people. My grandpa was a huge baseball fan that he's the inspiration for the baseball algorithm. I agree. It was something to do while we were sitting in a chair dying in our nineties. Yes. Yeah, it was. It's not something to do for people in their I wanted to say 30s. I'm in my 40s. <laughs> it's not something people do that are under 50. Let's just say that. Okay. These sports are fun, right? I'll put it this way. You can do football because, uh, never mind. I'm way off track. <laughs> We're updating NBA. One thing we have to update that's really important, just like in college basketball, is the injury report in NBA. I'm not going to do the other stats because I might have done them already, but I don't think I did. But I'm okay with that because we got payroll work to do. We've already had a 20 some minute video. We'll keep it under a half hour today, guys. Um, and we'll get we'll get my bed in also. I do believe that it's healthy to look, analyze, make an educated wager, and let it go and do something else with your life for the rest of the day. I think it's sometimes super profitable to sit and watch games and make live bets when lines fluctuate to really, really generous lines. I think there's something to be said for doing that. I also think it's very nerve wracking and, um, and the time can be better spent doing something else, especially when, when you don't have to watch these games. So I, I found a balance with doing this in the morning, getting a wager out and then going on living my life. That's been working. And then picking it up at the end of the night and checking up how things done. But you've noticed if you caught any of these videos in the last few days about me in the morning is I don't know the results of the games. I have I haven't watched. I haven't even checked my phone when I woke up. That is super healthy, because when you're when you're doing too much of this, you you know the score of every game at all times because you have money on it, and that's not not healthy. So, as someone from experience of, of trying to go go balls deep and all out, right. Um, on doing this, it's not healthy and not fun, but passively doing it is fun. And that's why NFL is kind of fun 
because NFL happens like on the weekend and, you know, you can get it done and then do something else. It was something to do, you know, um, when you're sitting around on the holidays, you know, just filled with turkey and, and you heard the same family stories over and over again. It is something to do. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. All right. So NBA is kind of ready. I didn't update the player stats. I don't really care. But we did update the injury report. Golden State injuries. Leading to a Memphis Grizzlies probably beating them. That line's only 250. I mean, with those kind of injuries, I, I'm looking at NBA on my phone now because I'm making more of a bet. And I'm seeing Memphis at minus 250. Um, so what are those injuries? Let me just check real quick. Golden State's injury. A lot are out. Illness. Watch out. Groin. Shoulder, Draymond Green's foot, maybe. Uh, where, where's um, Steph is out also with shoulder, yeah, for a while. All right, so yeah, that minus two fifty is okay. I just added it to my bet. It just moved to minus two fifty five. They must be hearing me talk. Uh, all right, let's move. Um, let's go back to. Celtics over the Bucks, only a five percent margin. And look, look at the difference in it. This is why this is such a reasonable bet on Memphis. It's huge. It's big margin, big points. It says not even close. It says you can even take them to cover. I won't. I'll just take them to win because I I can't handle losing by less than six in a close game. And no, you know they still win. I you got to win if they win. Mm. So that's what the algorithm is really trying to predict: winners. I um. You got a couple underdogs here, but you're hurting. Knicks at home against the Sixers. Says they could slightly do it because of injuries. Close games. Enix away at Denver, but it's 8%. Ugh, tough. And here it looks like Lakers plus 7.5 because of injuries on Dallas. And this being close anyway. So I'm going to take – I'll get hurt on that again, but I'll take the Lakers plus 7.5. So that's a lot of points. Anytime I see a close game where you can get seven and a half points, I I, I always tell you to do this. So the margin's under 10%. It's at five. The injuries are there. I mean, we could look and say, what are the injuries for the Mavericks if we cared? Yeah, look at how many outs there are, 106% right here. This is this is a, a injured team. So th- this is reasonable that the Lakers might even win, but I'll take them plus seven and a half on the round robin. Do we mess with either one of these? I have to ask, the answer is probably no. Three and a half is not enough to take the Nuggets. The Suns are playing well, actually. Um, Makes me want to take the Suns at plus 135. Or plus three and a half, even. That's an interesting idea. Oh, man. It's an 8% margin. To to say no to these in in the NBA algorithm, I should take them. All right. I'm convincing myself to take the Suns plus three and a half. And I'm, I'm not going to take the Knicks. This Sixers are becoming a better team. No, or no, that's I've been thinking of Brooklyn. That's a better team. Now the Knicks can win that game. I have an instinct to stay away from it, which means it will probably win. I should just take the whole list of NBA. Boston to win over the Bucks because the margin is there and the points are there barely. But Boston will let you down. Hmm. All right, I'm done. I'm just going to take them all. I'm taking the Knicks to win. <laughs> taking Boston to win. And I'm taking, it's now Phoenix plus three and not even three and a half. Um, I'm taking Phoenix to win. I'm taking winners because it's better to root for stuff like that. So I've got eight picks on my phone right now that look like this. And I'll, I'll recopy them in a second. Packers, Utah State, Seattle. The Grizzlies. So this is now we're now we're on to NBA. We got Memphis. We got the Lakers plus seven and a half. We've got the Celtics. We've got the Knicks. We're making it a heavy NBA day because I oh yeah, was I gonna do the I mean, if, if we're going crazy? Do I add the overs in the other two football games? I think I do. 
So now we're showing why I have a gambling problem. And we're just going to let it happen because it's 80 bucks. I'm sorry. We're, we're just going to let it happen. Because I like to try to root for big money. I'll explain why. This is the problem. You'll see that with these eight picks, we're not going to be able to make enough money for me to care. And I shouldn't say that. I, I would care if I won, absolutely. But uh, but it's not going to be like Tesla car money. I want to win a Tesla car with, with one of these bets. So we've got to try to win it like a Tesla every day. We've got to go big time. So we're looking for winners. We're looking for things to go our way. We are going to have a slight gambling problem today, but we're going to be okay with it because because we're doing work. I'm making so much more than eighty dollars with the payroll work that I will be doing today while these games are going on. That I should not I should not be concerned about it, and I'm not going to. So let's go back to NFL, and we'll take the overs in those games. <laughs> so we're taking the over in the over thirty six and a half in the Denver game. Um, yeah, what. What an awful game. We're going to see that. Um, it is a weird one. And we're taking over 40 and a half in the Bucks cardinals game. All right. So giving us something to listen to. All right. And then we've got over 40. Tampa Bay versus Arizona. So this ends up yielding on a 10 team ticket today for Christmas day on the 10th day of Christmas. What was it? How many days of Christmas are in that song on the 15th day of Christmas? How many is 12 days of Christmas? Uh Oh, we need a couple more picks. Yeah, we do <laughs> on the 12th day of Christmas, right? Yeah. Oops. Sorry. We're going to, we have a gambling problem and we have a problem with making things tidy. And the 12th day of Christmas is very, very funny to have 12 picks on it. Because you can do that in the algorithm. You can do that here. So we need to find a couple more picks. So let's go back to college basketball. Because <laughs> we bet on all the NBA games. And college basketball said, be careful of Iona a little bit. And Pepperdine could win. I said, Pe so Pepperdine plus seven and a half is minus 118. So we're taking that. Plus seven and a half is minus 118. There's the DePaul, and then there's SMU against Hawaii. On Christmas, the Southern Methodist ruin Hawaii's Christmas. That's what the algorithm says. So we're going not crazy. We're going to go SMU plus four and a half because this is a round robin. And we're not taking the underdog line but because maybe they make it super close, right? So we got that. Even though I'm betting against Hawaii at home, it's S it said SMU wins in the algorithm. So there's 12 picks on here for the 12 days of Christmas. These two are at minus 110. Now I have 80 bucks. What are we going to do? Well, a dollar, if we win all these, pays 1200 bucks. That's pretty cool. Let's waste another dollar and 20 cents on these. And let's waste six dollars and 60 cents on these. Just on the outside chance, we have an amazing 12 days of Christmas and hit all of them by accident. We're going to turn eight bucks into 4,500. Now let's actually try to wager on something where we're going to get paid something back with the remaining $71.20. And that's going to be, I always say I like the fours. Um, the fours are probably one of the best ones to use uh, at almost every level. It's weird. Four, hitting four picks or more is kind of a cutoff of of, of a nice payment multiple when it comes to hitting parlays. So, so and there's 12 picks here, which is more than normal. I've been doing like nines or tens. So it makes me want to also flirt with the fives because I we have a lot of favorites on here, which is not the way I normally structure these. But the fours are cheaper. So what if we tried the minimum amount available on most betting apps that go low, which is a dime? That's $49.50, which leaves me with some left over. Um, what does just that alone pay? If you don't think about the crazy stuff, you can see that pays about 10 to one turn, you know, so even if you hit all these, because a lot of these are favorites, this is not an amazing payout day. And that's because we have so many favorites on here. Um, we are, we are 80% plus favorites. So what it makes me want to do is it makes me want to flirt with something higher than the fours. But you can't ignore the fours because the fours are too profitable regardless. So we are going to put that $49 there. 
but we're left now with 22 bucks, right? So that's say do this. That sucks. That doesn't pay. Um, no, actually it says do this. Wait a minute. Eighty dollars and thirty cents. So I have exactly eighty dollars. I'll make it seventy cents on the end. So here, you can win almost ten thousand nine ninety four hundred bucks. That's funny. All right. So what I did here is now all of a sudden. Let's assume we get, if we get less than um, nine of these games, right? So if we lose four of them, doesn't matter which four we lose. We lose four of them. You can see we're going to lose money, most likely, especially if it's the underdogs we lose. Uh, or we'll about break even. So our cutoff on the day is we have to go nine and three or better. Once we go nine or three and better, we're going to win. So, so we... So because of the nature of playing a lot of bad lines that we think are going to win, we really have to do well. Not always the way I like to do around Robin, but on today's limited schedule and, and wanting to get 12 in, I did backfill a little bit. Now, I, I haven't made the wager yet. I could do some crazy things and say, is this really going to be our day? Like take, take SMU to win, do some alternate overs to get paid here, you know? That's actually a better idea is either you get these right or wrong. Right. And if you want to, if you get it right, like if you can get a line of like plus 240 on something, watch what, yeah, see what it does to your payout. Immense because you're giving yourself a chance to win more money. So I'm not going to do this. I'm actually going to pad some of these games. What am I going to do? I don't know, guys. I've actually spent too much time on this. So I'm going to just do what I just said. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> on my phone right now 0. 0.7 0. 0.1 0. 0.1 0. 0.1 and the fours 0. 0.1 $80 93.7402 <laughs> some lines I guess kind of changed slightly I just pressed bet and it's over and it's about this so that's the sports algorithm update for Christmas day those are your 12 picks of the day good luck May your presence be merry and your picks be winning.